Hallo liebe Motorsportfreunde zu einer weiteren Folge unserer Interviews aus der Welt der Formel 1. Heute feiern wir eine Premiere. Zum ersten Mal haben wir gleich zwei Rennfahrer vor der Kamera. Gerhard Berger und Jean Alesi zählten zu den Stars in ihrer Zeit. Der Grund, warum wir sie heute im Doppelpack hier haben, ist, fünf Jahre lang sind sie zusammen im gleichen Team gefahren. Zuerst für Ferrari, dann für Benetton. Und trotz aller Rivalität sind sie immer gut miteinander ausgekommen und bis heute Freunde geblieben. Wir wollen erfahren, wie das möglich war und wir freuen uns auf viele gute Geschichten aus der damaligen Zeit. First of all, thank you Jean, thank you Gerhard, that you take the time to talk to us and we are really looking forward to some nice stories. Uh, it's now 27 years that you drove the last time together. Um, wow, 27 years that we drove the last time together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for Benetton. And still you are meeting now, a long time after the end of your career. What's the reason for this meeting? Well, first of all, uh, I have to say, uh, with Gerhard, we always had a, 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 a friendship, but um, at different level. We had a, a friendship because he was my teammate, mm -hmm. a friendship because uh, we worked together. But then he grew up when, obviously, uh, we stopped to, uh, to race and uh, we were always in contact. I, I, like, uh, I like him. Uh, uh, that's the first time that you say something like this. <laughs> uh, can I can I have a part of this tape? Because yeah. I like to hear it all year long. <laughs> I like I like him, but uh, uh, it it was not a rivality we had mm -hmm. in uh, in uh, our team because we had Ferrari and uh, and Benetton. He he, he, he was because uh, Gerard came from uh, um, probably the the toughest uh, teammate ever for all the drivers, Ayrton. Mm -hmm. So when he came to uh, to uh, Ferrari and we were for the first time together, I never accept to uh, to be number two because he arrived as a, <laughs> the um, experienced driver mm -hmm. with uh, uh, a direction with Nicky. No, it's uh, the quick one. And, <laughs> and, then, and then they said, okay, Gerhard, come. And I will show you uh, uh, how how f uh, tough I'm going to be on the track. And w actually, we we were fighting all the time, all the time. From uh, testing, I was, me, from testing, I was uh, uh, looking for the first lap always to shock him, you know. <laughs> and uh, we we had a very nice uh, time. What what f f for you was the reason why you got along so well? <laughs> I think it's a lot to do with personalities, you know. You have people who are uh, always uh, having problems with everybody. And I think in our case, uh, Sean is somebody we just had this morning, we spoke. Uh, I think he, he doesn't have anybody who doesn't like him in, 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 in the paddock. He's a, he's a person who gets along with people. And, and I'm also okay, you know. I'm also with my teammates. I got along with Senna. I got along with all of them. Yeah. Uh, And so, from our personality side, we 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 had had an idle situation, but as you say, we had very high competition, and uh, and it was not we've been I don't know so nice together. No, in the moment we've been in the car, mm -hmm. he think how he can kill me, and I thought <laughs> how I can kill him. <laughs> yeah. uh, illogical, and, and and he was like this. Mm -hmm. So when you talk so many years after, you you have the tendency then to talk about how good friends we win. And, but in the end of the day, when when he came, you know, uh, when I was uh, when I was in the barrier. Uh, I'm sure he laughed under the helmet and did a lot the ears and the other way around too, you know. So, but. But as he, as he say, I arrived in the team, and as I was the more experienced one, and you know, of course, I tried to play the number one status. But in the end of the day, we never had a number one or number mm. two status because we've been the same, and especially from the speed, anyway, you know. But also from we we've been from day of one on always on the same same level fighting to each other, but. The games, what what was going on, you know, like when I did the contract, I I negotiate the 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 spare car was always just for me. Mm -hmm. I don't need a, a spare car was a pain in the ass because you had to go out in 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 the warm up and you spent the time on two cars and so. But it was a good sign for your teammate 
that okay, <laughs> you are done. So this is this this games. Yeah. Yeah. But then or, or we came and uh, then we by this Ferrari motorhome. And there was one room a little bit bigger, one bed a little bit bigger, one bed a bit smaller, one room a bit smaller. <laughs> so obviously I put straight away my stuff in the bigger one and I position <laughs> myself in the bigger one. Next next time I come, go into the bus to my bed. I was sitting this dog in my bed, so he bought us a, a, a French bulldog and put it in my bed. So, so you know, it was competition, was was uh, fights and things, but always in a in a in a good way. But you were fighting for wins and podiums and the same part of the track. Was there never the suspicion oh, the other guy could have the better car or he got the better strategy or the stronger engine? All day long. Yeah. Really? All day long. Yeah. All, always. You know what? I had I had an advantage. Because um, I, I speak in Italian yeah. and uh, I had all the friends, so I knew exactly everything he had on his car. <laughs> he had his uh, connection with Ascanelli, and um, he knew and the English side, uh, Barnard. Uh, Barnard, and, Barnard uh, yeah. So at the end of the day, uh, we never get anything better. Actually, once I remember, uh, I don't know if you remember, for the French Grand Prix, they came out with a gearbox in uh, titanium. And uh, the, the, when I try the, the when I test the car in Ferrari, no, really the car was better, mm. uh, better balance, and uh, I think the floor was even better, uh, different because of the, the the space. So the next Grand Prix was French Grand Prix, and I said to Jean Todd, please Jean, uh, it's France. Can I have this gearbox, uh, even if there is a, on, not one for Gerhardt, maybe? Uh, so I tried to sell it like that, and Jean said no. All the two cars or the gearbox stay uh, in, uh, in Maranello. Mm -hmm. So I try, eh, gearbox. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But normal, you know, normal. But <laughs> in the end, we we couldn't complain that anybody of us would have treat, be treated better. You know, we, we some we've been very sensitive. Mm -hmm. To certain things, as I said. The same at sorry, the same at Benetton. Was it the, the same? There also uh, same treatment. Oh, inside yes. the team. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but you know, uh, so, so, is, when I, I hear this magic about uh, mm. uh, the first driver, with yeah. the, it doesn't exist. I mean, the yeah. team, it doesn't care about mm. that. When, when, when I hear now the, mm. uh, the car is for Verstappen, not for Paris, a team wants the best for each driver because they need the points. They need, if one has a problem, the other one has to win. Mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't exist. You know, sometimes. When you have a clear, very strong driver and you have one engine a little bit better on the desk bench, maybe you move it there. But this is not doesn't make the difference. In the end, they are prepared on a similar level. And but still, at the time you were driving, there were big rivalries like Senna versus Prost or Piquet versus Menzel. Why did it happen then with them? What was different with them? Because you drove with Prost, so you know how Prost was as a teammate, and you drove with Senna, and you know how Senna was as a teammate, and you never had problems with them, man. Eh? I think if I, if I, if I, you agree, we were more, uh, we were fighting more to have a better car than to have a better position each other, mm -hmm. because our team was competitive, but um, uh, not reliable, reliable not sometimes organized. So we were more fighting on this aspect for uh, the speed of the car, more than be uh, P2 or P1 and uh, Gerhard P5 or P6 or, mm -hmm. or the opposite. You know, we were really fighting for the team. And that's one aspect. And the other aspect is also, you know, you have people, they increase their performance with, with having somebody. An enemy. Like an enemy, yeah. 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 They are all day long thinking how he, they can put mm. the enemy and, and, and they increase the performance with it. Mm. I don't know if it would work with me, but I, I'm a, I am somebody what, what needs a bit harmony to, to get the maximum out of me. And I think Jean is the same. Self. So I had no interest to, to, to have to burn extra energy yeah. with fighting with the teammate. Mm. And I didn't do it with anybody of my teammates in all my career. Mm. But I remember at the time when you were with uh, Michele at Ferrari, yeah. so the time before, there were not troubles, but there was some politics in the team. Uh, there was a little bit politics, yeah. Uh, but but even Michele, Michele was 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 a super nice guy and a very big gentleman. And for Michele, it was very difficult because I came in as 
young, no experience, no no name, and suddenly he had somebody. He got under pressure with, with on the on the on the left hand. So his environment started to do a bit politics in the beginning, but Michele was always super too. You mm. know, no, I couldn't complain about any of my teammates, but saying from all. The, the longest time I had with Sean, and 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 the closest we also came, Sean mm -hmm. myself from from my all yep. my teammates. Yeah. I mean, what Jean just said before that uh, Jean thought was very correct, not giving him the one gearbox if as only one. How important was the team principle? How he handled the situation? Did Jean thought handle it different than Flavio? Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yes. Oh, yeah. Of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In what way? Tell us. <laughs> Okay, you start going off. <laughs> Flavio, Fl Flavio is a completely different uh, personality. Mm -hmm. And uh, how should I explain it? Flavio, Flavio is a super manager with, with great, great, or let's say, he's, he's, he's a great manager, he's a super manager, he understands immediately what has to be the priorities, what has to be done to win. Uh, very good. But he doesn't care about anything. Whatever is his advantage for him or to win, mm -hmm. it, the rest doesn't exist. Yeah, I agree. And if it's today, Sean, because he, he, this morning he, he, he looked a little bit better, then doesn't care, it needs to go this way. And tomorrow, if it's the other, it goes the other. And and Sean was always much more balanced. Mm. Uh, completely two different personality, both extremely successful. And and Jean, uh, on the top of it, I mean, he has a, a racing experience. Mm. Flavio was not uh, coming from a, um, a racing business, so he had no clue about uh, the sensibility of a, a driver or a mechanic or an engineer. So he, he had always. Uh, Uh, the correct touch, but very uh, straightful. I like Jean, even we, if we had some big arguments sometimes, but I like one thing, uh, is yes or no. It's mm. not, uh, when you leave uh, a meeting with him, you know, you have the answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and I agree what you say with Flavio, but Flavio, I mean, I have a lot of respect for him because he was the only guy I know coming from completely no, no idea about racing, coming from the side and being successful as he was. Absolutely. Winning World Championship, not just having Schumacher in the car, also found Alonso in the car. And that's always no history of racing. Uh, it, as I said before, he's a great manager. Mm -hmm. You drove 77 Grand Prix together in these five years. So 77? You, yeah. Okay. So you're among the best. I mean, the, the, I think the, the longest serving pairing was uh, Michael and uh, Barrichello with 102 races. But anyway, so you know each other very well. If there's one quality of Gerhard you would have liked to have, and well, one quality of Jean you would have liked to have, what was it? Yeah. Uh, Gerard quality, I mean, not quality. As a driver, yeah. Either, but anyway. I, would, I would say uh, as a driver, because for the rest, he's a, fr a real friend. So that is uh, the most important quality you can have as a human being. But as a driver, he had a, a way to drive uh, who keep the car more uh, competitive for, for the distance. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, I remember, I know, I think if now, even if we, if we are older, we go back to uh, Ockenheim, uh, I will never be able to, to do turn one as he was doing uh, during the Grand Prix. In this corner, I never understand how he was managing to make this corner. <laughs> and um, because he had a way to drive and uh, I like very much, it, it, we had different Car uh, um, uh, setup, yeah. no setup yeah. control. He had a massive car control, <laughs> <laughs> but the 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 way to to set the car was very different. Um, and I, it happened where I had to jump in a in a T car with his setup. 
I was able to drive the car, but I was uh, a bit uh, uh, in trouble. But I, I would like to have a mix of his uh, driving style and uh, understand yeah. and my. Okay, yeah, that would that could, it could you, be very quick. You, yeah. Would make us uh, yeah. maybe winning the world championship, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> what what quality or strong point you would have taken from from Jean? Uh, Jean's, uh, I mean, obviously his reflex, his car control was very special. For in, not just against me, against everyone, mm -hmm. and obviously with Senna, I had all, had a had a very nice benchmark where 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 the level where it could be, but I always say. From all the drivers, in Formula One, Sean was was the ta most talented. As, uh, uh, with the talent he had, with the success he had, doesn't fit together. He should have won much more races. Mm. For whatever reason, it didn't happen. But from the speed, uh, he was really, really top end. And when you look, when you say top end, and then when you put out in the rain or half wet. Uh, don't need to fight, better to concentrate yourself <laughs> and let him go. <laughs> sometimes you look and, it was, and as he said before, he tried to kill me already when he got out in the first lap, <laughs> putting a lap time where you, where you start to sweat. And this was, he, 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 you could put him call in the car and he was immediately onto, mm. onto the base. So, uh, but to bring it to the point, his car control mm. was very special. You started five years earlier than, than Jean in Formula One. What was the first moment you got aware? Ah, this I still have. This I still have in front of me. When I close my eyes, I still see. Uh, I was in Le Castellet, driving Ferrari, my first period in Ferrari, and and coming coming to the chicane, and 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 this Tyrrell passed me with two wheels over the <laughs> curbs and sideways. <laughs> It was, it was a way that I, when I went into the pits, I asked my engineer, I said, can you find out who is sitting in this bloody Tyrell today? <laughs> <laughs> and it was his first race, yeah. his first time in the practice in, in Formula One. And the other way around, when did you meet Gerhard the first time? I mean, yeah. obviously before when you haven't but been it was It was his day because he had the boat in, uh, in Cassis, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was sleeping there and uh, I, I, I met him in the restaurant, probably he was at La Cadière, La Cadière d'Azur, the restaurant uh, where... It everybody... was in the terrace out, I still remember it, yeah. in the back terrace where the bay of the... Of, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and you were sitting with your ex-wife. Ex-wife, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I saw him because, you know... For... Or ex, ex-wife, you ex had so many wives. Yeah, but, I, uh, I, you I, too, I'm <laughs> You too, I'm following you. <laughs> 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 so, we, you know... Uh, this day for me was a, a special day because mm. I was watching the races on TV and, and Gerhardt, uh, Nigel, uh, Nelson, uh, of course, Ayrton, Alain. And um, I, I had to go to make uh, this uh, Grand Prix, but I signed just for one race. And, uh, and that was magic because I was in the middle of them, but I was embarrassed, you know. I, I was. I, I didn't feel really relaxed because, mm. uh, you know, you see the driver you you watch on TV. It was, it was, a, it was a very magical uh, moment. Mm. Your first Grand Prix was also your home Grand Prix in '84. How was it for you? I mean, you came from Formula Three and touring cars, and then all of a sudden you were sitting in an ITS BMW with 700 or 800 horsepower at the time in '84. What do you remember from your first race? Uh. The most I remember, it, uh, Celtic at the time or the Repulling at the time was a very, very difficult, very fast circuit. So the Formula One cars, the handle there was not easy at all. It was all high speed corners and and was difficult to get up to speed. But as I was born there, home there, I know it very well, so I could perform very well. And I remember on Friday I had a good practice. I was somewhere straight away midfield. And I remember Paul Roche came and said, well, that's a good time what you're doing with this engine because I will bring you tomorrow another engine, <laughs> you will see. <laughs> and they put out from Nelson Piquet the engine from Friday and push it over to me and we put it into the ATS. So on, on Saturday, I'm supposed to have quite a bit more horsepower and, 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 and fighting for a good lap time. 
and unfortunately the gearbox was broken when I exited the beach. I couldn't, I couldn't do the second practice. And this I still remember and still it hurts because I thought I could do a fantastic lap time there already. And you know, when you come in the first race and do a fantastic lap time, that always stays. It's always a little bit the first, the first time you show yourself, sure. it's, it stays a long time. Mm. And, uh, and this, this was something I still remember today. Maybe save your life. The gearbox. Maybe, maybe too. You know, you never know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there was a tricky situation at the start, huh? huh? A tricky situation. Yeah, then I remember this one, you know. Uh, of <laughs> yeah, when all the cars, uh, one of the biggest uh, no, I, crash. I, 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 no, there was no crash. I had a big one because they had the fuel in, mm. so the car was heavy, and there was a bump after the start, and I, I crashed onto the, onto the, with the floor on the ground and lifted the wheel, oh. and I went middle in the field. I was completely sideways, <laughs> and I just catched it somehow, not because I, I, I was I know, good. I didn't I just, see that. Yeah. No, the, the, the big crash was a few yeah. years later. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was also very close uh, <laughs> to have a big crash with everybody, but I was lucky. I, I catched it, and I, I kept going on. Yeah. When you are new in Formula One, young, then obviously the team principal or the boss is, is, is something you, you look at. I mean, in your case, it was Günther Schmidt. He was a bit special, wasn't he? Ah, Günther was... Uh, did you rem uh, do you know uh, Günther Schmidt? No. I From ATS, the oh, boss. He was nice, lovely, crazy, <laughs> uh, unpredictable, uh, uh, strange, everything. You know, this guy had... A, and I ended up in his team. And he was... He had a one car team with ETS. Gustav Brunner made the car and Manfred Winkelock was the driver. And suddenly he smelled that if he could put the second car and maybe put Manfred under pressure, it would lift all his team. And uh, so obviously he puts me against Manfred straight away, what, what always brings uh, some bad or some difficult <laughs> feeling. But anyway, I was... I, was, I got the second car, I start, as we say, repouring, and he immediately believed in me that I can do very well. And then we go to Monza, my second race. And great, Monza starts raining just before we go out to the, and, uh, to the first laps. And uh, I never driven a Formula One car in the wet, so it was my first time. And I saw, I still remember, it wasn't a beach. I saw Lauda out, rain tires, uh, Rosberg out, rain tires, everybody rain tires, rain tires. <laughs> and they put the cover away, I had slick some. <laughs> and uh, Günther Schmidt go out and say, I think this is slicks today. <laughs> and I was the only guy on slicks. <laughs> first time. You finished the lap? Uh, wait, uh, wait, first time, no, wait, first time in a Formula One car in the rain on slicks. And he, say, he kills me, now he kills me, you know. But anyway, I do what he says because I have no other choice. I need to, 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 to survive in this team. And I went out and I tell you, Sean, I was for half an hour, for one hour, quickest guy on the circuit. <laughs> because, you know, outside everywhere, I was still a little bit dry. I catch I the, <laughs> so I buzzed louder, everybody outside. <laughs> and, you know, the big thing out my name was always number one, you know. So it was great for me, you know, but, <laughs> but I, I, I thought he kills me. Your first boss was Ken Terrell. I think he was yeah. very strict with young drivers, wasn't he? Yeah, but that was my best uh, year sure. in Formula One. Why? Because I had zero pressure, except the first race, because the first race mm. I, want, I wanted to show uh, and to keep my, uh, my position, and I finished fourth. So because I finished fourth... You first, in your first yeah. race, you yeah. finished fourth? Yeah. He was second for a while yeah. in the race, huh? Oh. I was uh, P2 ah, okay. for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I mean, not a long time. I mean, I was P2 for a time yeah. and then I finished P4. So uh, then when I signed for finishing the, the championship, Ken, every time he, uh, after the session, he was coming to me with a, sm a very small paper and uh, with uh, over-having for the braking because on braking I was using the gearbox, you know. <laughs> so he was saying, you see, you will not finish the race. You see, you will not finish a qualifying lap. So he was always scared. And uh, race after race, uh, he honestly gave me a lot of confidence because you are talking about uh, Monza on wet. And uh, uh, when I arrived in Monza, same thing, it was wet. N uh, never drove the Formula One on this condition. 
I came out on the Corva Grande, uh, a 360. Mm. But no TV, no thing, no, nobody <laughs> saw it. So I came back to the box. He came to me and he said, uh, why you, you, you are not uh, driving? I said, no, it's wet. He said to me, uh, you spin? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay. He showed me the, t- the, the T-car. Yeah. He said, okay, go out, take your, um, uh, your feeling, yeah. and if you have a problem, we have an, a spare car. He gave me so much uh, mm-hmm. confidence. I mean, this guy was great. Mm. But yeah. he was scared because he was just looking for the points. You know, at sure. the time, yeah. uh, it was uh, up to six positions. Mm. And uh, he, he didn't want... He, he was embarrassed when we were in the first row fighting for the podium. That was uh, too much for him. You know? yeah. Is it true that the drivers had to be in bed at 10 o'clock or something like that? No, no. no because no. people were saying that he... No, no. no. He, he, he always says to me, he say, you would be a great driver for us, but you never could drive for us. You never shaved. You how you dressed, <laughs> <laughs> how you look. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he, was, he, he was looking everything. Mm. But... Ken, uh, f- for me, was uh, uh, the key of uh, my life in Formula One. The race, let's say the breakthrough where all the fans got aware of you was obviously Phoenix. Gerhard was on pole position, yeah. but in the first corner, you were first, do you remember? Of course, I remember. I remember because... Unfortunately, I remember too. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, saying that, Gerhard at this time, he had no space in the car. He, he drove yeah. it like that, yeah. you remember. Yeah. But... Uh, I make a kind of check down in Silverstone with the Tyrell, the car, the car was great, with uh, the um, Goodyear. And flying to Phoenix, when I arrive in Phoenix, uh, uh, Villa del Prat came to me in the Juan and said, uh, we have the Pirelli now. So what do you mean the Pirelli? <laughs> no, we, we changed. Uh, Ken made the contract, but they say no test, no thing. I say, no, no. Okay, so I didn't have the because we had the qualifying trials i didn't have the um the confidence to be really on the limit so i didn't qualify very well i qualified fifth but martini pierre luigi martini was in pole oh Who, second at first row he was second he was you had the pole yeah. Yeah. but pierre luigi martini with the, the minardi mm. was p2 so the tide was amazing you know uh, but f- to found the, 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 the feeling in one lap, it was, and the Tyrell, you know, with the, the, the single uh, uh, damper, damper yeah. the, the front was uh, so precise. Mm-hmm. So two or three times I hit the wall inside, you know, mm-hmm. so, but I, I qualified well. And we had the tires to finish the Grand Prix without pit stop. So I was fifth. Then when I start, I had a good one. And it was a long straight before. And there was a zing, 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 zing. Then so no, 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 no. <laughs> and then I, 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 I took the lead. Gerhard was uh, behind me. And I was pushing like hell because I said, I don't know how long it will last. You know, I don't, I, I don't care to finish the race. <laughs> I want to make some laps uh, leading the, race, the yep. Grand Prix. So I was pushing, pushing, pushing. And then I, I pulled away. Bon, Gerhard went uh, in, a, in a wall. In a wall, yeah. Uh, after a bridge. Yeah, yeah. I was I was stuck between the battles. I won't break and I couldn't get it out anymore, my feet out anymore. I was just <laughs> so then I didn't know if it was him or uh, Ayrton. But at one stage I said, okay, now it's possible to win the race. And suddenly I see a red point coming back. It was uh, Ayrton. And then he stopped for the pit stop. He stopped, he changed the tires, then he was uh, flying and uh, but I wanted just to to do the best, and uh, that's why when he, he, he was uh, close to overtake me, I was not zigzagging. I just I was breaking very late, and then he overshoot me. And it was very nice time. But he was not very happy about it eh? that you gave him such a hard time on track. Well, uh, no, Ayrton, Ayrton was uh, uh, probably on track the best uh, uh, guy to fight mm-hmm. because he was fair. When, when he had the unfair uh, situation, like with Alan, he, he, he was because uh, he was a money back. Mm. 
but it was not because he was a, a, a dangerous driver. Mm. But fighting with him, it was nice. I, I, get, I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. You know, I man, you see a lot of big drivers where you see them doing then also some fouls, mm -hmm. you know. I don't, never did, you know. He, he just, when he wants to overtake, he, he just was so precise and, and then he breaks so late and whatever. But it was never unfair. Mm -hmm. as, as you okay. say. Yeah. Gerhard's breakthrough was uh, Imola when he went first time on the podium with the Benetton. And you remember this overtaking of Johansson out of Tosa. Uh, what do you remember from that race? And was that the trigger to get the Ferrari contract? I just want to say the most I remember was the telephone call on Monday morning from Ferrari. Uh, yeah. Was it already on Monday morning? <laughs> yeah, it was Monday or straight away on Monday after the race. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. From Piccinini. But it was also funny because uh, at this time... Piccinini for me and asked me if I could come. Mr. Ferrari would like to, to meet me. Um, Ron Dennis was trying to get me to McLaren. And Jackie Stewart asked me for Turel. He <laughs> called me also in this week from, and you know, I mean, I, I was not considering to go to Turel yeah, because if you have the possibility, Ferrari or McLaren, that was my choice. But, uh, Obviously, I always let the doors all open because when you're negotiating in Formula One you and you have just two and they start to communicate, especially via Valvo or something, mm -hmm. you're always in trouble. So it's always better to have somebody more to, to, to get a good negotiation done. But uh, that was all after Imola, mm -hmm. in the spirit after Imola. Yeah. Why you chose Ferrari then? Uh, totally emotional. Mm. <laughs> uh, you know... I mean, I'm sure Sean can tell you the same thing because we are both very emotional. And um, logical, yeah, it was f at the time McLaren was, was the best team. But still, when Ferrari called me and, uh, and I've been in Maranello, I said, no, that's, that's what, I, mm. what I would like to do. You, you immediately met uh, Enzo Ferrari? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> I, I think I was the last driver doing yeah. direct with him personal contract. It was, it was funny. Because, I don't know if I ever told you, but Piccinini called me to come to Maranello. So it's the first time I drive to Maranello. And he told me a petrol station where to meet. So I came to a petrol station. Then they, I had to go to their car, laying on the bench in the back. They cover me with, uh, with some, <laughs> some, some blanket <laughs> that nobody sees me. Because it was not a Ferrari or Fiat or what, what, with what you came out? Uh, no, I had an Audi. Oh, okay. yeah. so, <laughs> So uh, they covered me and they brought me into Fiorano, to the office of, of Enzo. And, uh, and it was, well, the light was very low, you know, it was the scandals of light. It, 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 it's it's very, very strange atmosphere. And then when it, I remember the first question of Enzo Ferrari was, and I had Piccinini and Piero, his son, there. They was translating. I don't know what they translate, if they translate <laughs> me right or wrong, because, you know, knowing them very well, especially Piccinini after, most probably he, he translated he everything he in his way. <laughs> but and, well, I think the first question of, of Enzo Ferrari was, if I have a manager. And I say, no. And he says, so that means if we agree today, we could sign today. I say, yeah, we could, you know. But, you know, I, I was 100% sure that I have to bring some money because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to go to where I have to bring some money. And then he offered me, I think, $800,000 at the time. And I wasn't sure I need to pay $800,000 so I get $800,000. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I got eight hundred, And the second year, year I think, was one point four, And so I signed straight away. Yeah. <laughs> Jean, I think you were in a similar situation. You were at Tyrrell. I think Williams wanted you. Ferrari wanted you. There was a time. Was it true that you had three contracts? So why you finally ended up at Ferrari? What no, happened there? I, I explained many times the situation, <laughs> yeah. but um, I, I'm going to be uh, once in the box. We we love the, the the real story. When I signed for Tyrrell, it was to finish '89. And 1990. Yeah. Okay. At the end of 89, uh, I signed a contract with Williams for 91, 92, 93. And that was fixed. Mm -hmm. But in this contract, uh, they had um, um, a, clause. a clause. If the announcement is not made at the French Grand Prix, July 1990, 
we, uh, we have an option until uh, SPA, September. So my lawyer said, we cannot keep that, you know. And again, we, we didn't have uh, managers. I was alone, I was 24 years old. I called uh, uh, Frank, in the Frank, uh, I cannot sign it because my lawyer said that. He said, no, the, uh, forget the lawyer, believe me. I'm saying, I'm uh, uh, writing, I, I have this clause inside because the drivers are paid by Renault. They have no clue about what we are doing, but slowly I want to let them understand it's a correct driver, and then we have already our contract. I said, okay. So when Ferrari called me in 1990, mm -hmm. in, um, in, um, Spa, in uh, sorry, uh, uh, Imola, same time, <coughs> I said to Cesare uh, Fiorio, Cesare, uh, I cannot go to Ferrari because I have a contract already. He said, with who? I said, I cannot, I cannot tell you because it's going to be announced in July. Okay. Frank didn't make the announcement. And then I had a big fight uh, with, uh, with Frank from the, the British Grand Prix to another Grand Prix. We, uh, in two Grand Prix, we, we were really fighting. But at the British Grand Prix, uh, Nelson, he, he made an agreement with Ferrari well, we, on the paper mm. we, we, uh, with me. So three years, 91, 92, you know, to, to make the pressure on Frank. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay, show that to Frank. He said, okay, that is Ferrari, what they, uh, they, uh, they are prepared to sign. And Frank didn't move. He said, I don't, care. I don't give a shit. You have a contract <laughs> with me mm -hmm. until September. So then I go to Ferrari and I sign. Mm -hmm. Was Ferrari also an emotional thing for you? No. Like, like Gerhard said? But, uh, differently. Mm -hmm. Because I was not free. When I signed with Ferrari, I had a contract with, uh, with Frank Williams. Mm -hmm. And Ferrari has sure. to fight uh, Frank to get uh, my contract out. But let's say, did you feel, once you were there then at Ferrari, did you feel the legend of this, this team? Or? Oh, well, completely. Mm -hmm. Everything. You, you feel it from the, the moment you go out of the motorway and you go to this... Uh, you know, it's like... A, Uh, when you are religion and uh, you go to Lourdes or yeah. you know these places. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You, you, you are into it. Yeah. You are into it. Yeah. And you look everything in the pictures and uh, yeah. you go inside of the office, but I, I had no chance. Uh, Mr. Ferrari was um, not Dead there. Way, yeah. he, he, was, he passed away, but the, the house, it's a museum. Mm -hmm. You go inside and uh, you see everything. It's magic. Magic. Yeah. Magic. Your first year was with Alain. Was Alain something similar like Ayrton was for, for Gerhard? I mean, was it a, like a father figure or? Alors, Alain was fantastic because Alain, he has such a, a, a way to drive. He never, uh, he show everything. He show up uh, the setups and stuff like that. He has no problem to, uh, to divide, mm -hmm. but you cannot drive his car. The, the, the first time I drove the car, I almost crashed because uh, not turning. You know, I don't know how he was able to drive uh, the way he set the car. But very fair, uh, zero emotion. Mm -hmm. So uh, with the engineers, with me, uh, with anybody, he was uh, always uh, a very uh, precise uh, on um, um, giving the information for the engines for the dri drivability. Uh, we, we were working a lot for dri uh, drivability. And um, the, the setups made by him was, uh, was always great. Was it similar with you and, and Ayrton? No, I think it was different because uh, uh, me and Ayrton were same age, same generation version and mm. Prost was different. So I think Sean saw, Ed, uh, saw Alan as, uh, the as mm. huh? yeah, the, father or, yeah, or the professor. whatever. To, the to, professor, to, yeah. So professor, right. And Erdogan and me, we've been from day one on 
fighting each other, being sure that that or, or he looked at he 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 sorted it out, and I tried to sort this other side off, out. And I have to say, I did a huge mistake. When I was in Ferrari, I worked very close with Ascanelli. And this was an engineer what understands what I need on setup, what I need to pick fast, and so on. It was just fitting very well to me, whatever for whatever reason. And but I always thought it's me, but I underestimated how much important it is that you have the engineer and your performance together and this is gonna bring you the result. But anyway, when I came to to McLaren, I took the engineer of Alan. So experienced guy, but a completely different style. <laughs> uh, not just, uh, as you say, the completely different setup style, different working style too. When I came in in Ferrari with Ascanelli, I say the car is jumping there, the car is always staying there, and then end. Okay, see them all morning, and he was on his computer and setting up with his status. When I came in first time in McLaren, I say, well, the car is doing this and there, and the engineer says to me, and what 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 we gonna do? What we should we do? We should we do the spring? Should we do? I said, you you the engineer, you know. But you know him and Prost. Prost understood all these things because he, he old generation driver mm. worked in this way. So I immediately felt here I have a problem. I cannot get maximum performance out of myself in this way, even if the engineer was good, but didn't fit. So. I said, then do, I went to Ron Dennis and said, Ron, there's one guy in Ferrari, George Ascanelli, I need him, and he's a super engineer, we need him, the team is great. And then I did a couple of times, and I felt that uh, Ron was listening, and then I didn't hear anything, and so on. One day I got a telephone call from Ron, and Ron says, Gerhard, I have good news and bad news. What would you like to hear first? <laughs> and I say, well, tell me the good news. He says, I got Ascanelli. I said, fantastic. <laughs> and what's the bad news? The bad news is he's with Senna. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and this was, I think this was the moment where, where I lost the game. Mm -hmm. And but until this moment, try to fight Ayrton. We've been, actually, we've been quite close in qualifying and I could beat him there and there, but in general, he had a much better package than mm -hmm. me. And it's, as you say, with, with Prost, you know, I mean, these are the Prost Senna, uh, two of the most outstanding drivers we've seen in the business. And, uh, okay. and it, 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 I understand then, after one year, that uh, try to get as close as possible, try to, to get your day when, when everything fits for you. But in, in, for a championship, we will not beat him. Mm -hmm. When Gerhard then arrived at Ferrari, you were already there for two years then. I mean, the 93 car was not very good. For you, it was the second year in a row where the car was not very good. How tough was it to take? It was difficult because, uh, you know, in five years, uh, I had four different uh, team principals in Ferrari. Mm. Uh, engineers, we had uh, three. Uh, Postal Weight, Mijo, and then we had Barnard. Then we, uh, uh, Gustave Brunner came as well. So it was a mix. We didn't have a really a, a clean and clear um, picture. But when, when Gart uh, arrived, uh, I was very upset uh, and with Nikki because Nikki, Luca, uh, Montezemolo, and Gart, they made the deal. And as he said before, Gart, he, To, to push me, because at the end he didn't get it, uh, to have the, the, the a first quality uh, treatment in a, in a team. Mm -hmm. And that's supposed to be the second driver. So because mm -hmm. I was driving the, uh, the car for two years already in a bad uh, situations and bad, uh, co uh, the car was not competitive, I said, oh, so you, it's a, a lack of uh, uh, respect to mm -hmm. me. So he didn't like it. But at the end, Montezemolo said, okay, don't worry, we will make the good things and we give you a, a Formula One car. Mm -hmm. So I have a Formula One car in my house. Because I, I, learned yes, I learned yesterday, <laughs> say, I want half of it. Yeah, I, I have the reason for it. <laughs> so. so what were the best battles between you and on track, obviously, uh, in the Ferrari time? 
Well, I remember one, he didn't finish well for both, but um, he started for, uh, for a long time. To win Monza with Ferrari, uh, he, he had uh, the privilege to do it. Um, it must be something uh, unique. We had a week testing before the, the Italian Grand Prix, where he made me completely crazy. Still now, I'm upset. Because we had the plank, we had the plank, you know? Yeah. And with this uh, Ascanelli, they went with a plank uh, one millimeters. And they had uh, more downforce, of course, you know? And I was, uh, we were always uh, very similar lap time out of um, uh, Ascari. But from Ascari to the finish line in Parabolica, it was uh, five or six tenths faster in the corner. Mm. So I try everything. And, and, and you know, Parabolica in our days is not like now. Yep. There is a grass outside, you know, yep. so you, you don't want to crash. But anyway, I was pushing, pushing it. And he finished the week with a very good lap time and I was pit, uh, behind him. So I said, no, 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 I cannot go to the to the Italian Grand Prix like that. I cannot, I cannot. And anyway, when we arrived, <laughs> when we arrived to the Grand Prix, mm. he had the plank, five millimeters, mm. like me. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was a little bit different, you know? Okay. So um, the, the, the race start, uh, I was not on pole, uh, but we were close. And uh, Demon crashed into, um, into uh, Michael. Michael immediately, so out. And then P1, and then pushing, 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 and get out. And we were together, said, no, this time you will not win, you know. Mm -hmm. I will, uh, I give my, my maximum, and then pushing, pushing, we were together, together. And suddenly, I, I see some smoke in, uh, in the mirrors, mm -hmm. and he crash in the uh, second chicane. I said, okay, um, now take it easy, you know, but I didn't know what happened. Basically, I lost my th uh, uh, camera, camera. Mm. and the camera went in, in, in his suspension. That's also a lucky time for him because mm. you imagine in a, I mean, sure. uh, in a helmet. Mm. So out, and then uh, I was cruising uh, to, uh, to win this, uh, finally, this Italian Grand Prix, and uh, I had the bearing problem and I had to retire. Mm. So that was, for me, together, the, 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 the biggest fight uh, Okay. We had. Yeah. And it for you was a scary moment. Huh? With the yeah, it was a scary around. moment because the, the, uh, aerodynamically the cameras are made very sharp in the front. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a kind of yeah. uh, shape mm -hmm. uh, what uh, can be quite nasty. Yeah. And you know, you're, you're to the second chicken, you're more than 300 and suddenly like a bullet, this was mm -hmm. coming. You don't know, it catch you in the head sure. or okay. Mm -hmm. And he went into my front suspension, what is, is maybe one meter from your head. So, I, as you say, it was bloody lucky. Yeah. Yeah. It cut the suspension. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like a knife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that you had one misunderstanding in practice once. No, coming it's not, to a, mi Hello. It's uh, not uh, a misunderstanding. Uh, Hello. Let me start. Let yeah. me start. <laughs> because you know, you know what? With, I go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear this story. <laughs> well, because with Gerhard, we have the same story, but a different uh, okay. way to so explain. So why, you know, I, I would recommend we have two offices. Put him here, make the, make the, the interview with him here and with me here. And then you put together, and then you're going to have a proper, a proper video. <laughs> we, had, we had these stupid uh, rules, mm. uh, 12 lap in qualifying. Okay? Yep. And uh, so it was very easy to understand when was it the last run. So two laps in, two laps in. And on my last run, uh, I crossed the finish line. And my engineer said, uh, you own Paul. But wait, Gerhard is, uh, he, he, he arrived behind. And when Gerhard crossed the finish line, the engineer said, uh, Lunetta. And he said, ciao, fantastic pole position. So I opened my seat belt, I came out of the car a little bit with the public like mm. that. It was fantastic. And suddenly, before Ascari, <laughs> I see a bullet <laughs> on my mirrors, but Really, I don't know how I see it, you know. So I jumped back, back in the car and, and I said left or right. And I went on the wrong side. It was already uh, passing like that because Mr. Berger was upset not to be on pole. <laughs> and, and he wanted to, uh, to arrive to the pit and, you know. <laughs> and then I was a spectator like that. 
a massive accident. I said, shit, he, he, I kill him, you know. So I look, I look, he was moving a bit. I said, okay, he's okay. And um, I went back to the, to the pits, Jean Todd, uh, very upset, uh, all the <laughs> mechanics, what's happened, what's happened, because mm. they, they, they didn't show the sure. accident. Yeah. Then on the replay, yeah. it really looked like he's coming and I'm doing like that, yeah. you know. So, but why you did that? I said, Jean, I, I didn't see him, I was uh, cruising. And, and then I, we went to the hospital, Gerard. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame I didn't have the photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you very I much. I need to have a photo of you like that. It looks like he finished the Paris Dakar. You know? yeah. <laughs> and, and, and everywhere. And you're part of the story? Huh? You're part of the story? Are you? He, yeah, please. He did it pur for purpose. Yeah. <laughs> he, he looked. Uh, the story is right until yeah. he says, then I look left or right. But he went left because he thought that I come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he, even even then he he didn't accept that I am in front of him with the fence. You know yeah. he wants me in the first row. So. I mean, but talking about the how was the risk in your days? Was it still big? Of course. Oh, yeah. Of course. I mean, obviously the seventies were worse than the sixties. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, we, unfortunately, realize the risk uh, was very high after Imola. Yeah. And from this day up to now, because it never stopped, uh, they improve and they improve and they improve mm -hmm. not only the cars, but the circuits. Yeah. Because we had a very difficult circuit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We and just, were, yeah. you know, sometimes today when you go to an old circuit where we don't drive anymore and they didn't rebuild anything and mm -hmm. it's just like it was, you say, we've been driving here? Mm. Yeah. And in Japan, for example, Giuliano is racing there. Mm. They still have this kind of uh, uh, circuits. circuits. Mm. I mean, which is the same layout because Monza doesn't change, except now they will change a lot. But uh, a track like that, but with a gra with a grass without mm. the runoff yeah. and the curve very high, you know. And, and just before Imola, you had you had one of your worst crashes in the testing in Mugello, eh? yeah. because you couldn't drive then in Imola there. I broke my uh, mm. C4 and C5, mm. so I had to. Uh, I was uh, that was my lucky uh, shunt. Okay, Gerd, I think your worst accident had been Imola in '89, or has there been an accident which maybe had been worse? You know, at this time we had so many accidents, but. You didn't get it because you've been most of the time not on a camera. I mean, we, the, the whole setting was different than today. But we had a lot of accidents because materials was not uh, developed like today. Today you can do everything, calculate everything. You have simulation, you have test benches, you have everything is done already at home. Once you get it into the car, it's reliable and it's 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 secure. Mm. At our time, we we been the desk bench on the tire, on the on the on the disc, on the brakes, uh, on the aero, you know. And then, of course, you get the new car, the wing brakes or a disc explode or the tire explode. Always on the highest, uh, always on the points with the highest speed because the forces mm. was the highest. And then you had always terrible accidents. And uh, we talk about it, but you don't see it because there was not a camera, it was in testing and so on. And I had a lot, a lot of accidents and I cannot really tell you which one was the worst mm -hmm. because you don't know. And some maybe you don't even put them as worst and you've been that close of a disaster. Mm -hmm. But obviously the most spectacular in, 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 in TV was, was my accident in, yeah. in Imola. From. Mm. But despite all the danger, it was also a time of jokes. And I think if you drove in a team with Gerhard or with Nelson, you always had been <laughs> maybe sometimes the victim you of jokes. The worst. What, what was the worst Nelson one? We, we, we never made uh, jokes. Mm. It was a, a consequence of a, a situation mm -hmm. was a big joke. Mm -hmm. Uh, because, uh, for instance, that's a good explanation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah no, we, we yeah. were not yeah. fighting for jokes. Yeah, but we were in situation. He, he, the the end he end as a big joke, you know. Mm. When uh, we 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 had an accident with the Jean Todd cars, and you said it's me. Because of course, he, he said to Jean, eh? sure. Jean we have what? one time now to clarify. It's <laughs> always you, fault. <laughs> <laughs> one time, yeah. because. It was a new car. Mm. I was pu punished 
because for the first lap uh, was Mr. Berger who had to do uh, Furano, <laughs> and and uh, uh, so I was uh, I di- I didn't want to go to Furano. So mm. I don't go there. I, I'm I'm suffering too much. Well, was so, it a Formula One car or a road car? No, no F1, 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 F1. F1. Okay. So he was I was hearing, yeah. you know, because of the V12, he was testing, and suddenly, uh, after maybe uh, 20 minutes, he came to the office. And I said, it's finished, you know, they're changing something. I have to do uh, uh, some stuff here in, uh, in, in, with Jean. And I go back. So then he came back and he said, can you bring me to the circuit? I have no cars. I said, no, no problem. But I had no car as well. But when I came out of the office, I see the first car. It was Jean Todd car. No, we didn't know that Jean Claude was a lunch here. We didn't know that. No, Jean-Claude. I know. <laughs> you know. I know because <laughs> he was talking about this car. He, yeah. he, you know, he, he had special leather, special colors. Everything was special inside. And um, I start the car. He got the seat. He put the seat maximum to the back, seat belt. And he said, push. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> so we came out of the circuit. Like that, but really quick. Then the first corner, he opened the brake, mm-hmm. the end brake, you know, like yeah. that. The car was sliding and start to do, you know, <laughs> moving <laughs> not nicely. And they said, maybe he will understand he's not, uh, he will not do it again, you know. Then we arrived to uh, the road where they opened the, 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 the gate, the, the gate mm-hmm. to go inside of Fiorano. Yep. And, uh, you know, the trick was to, uh, to own like that. And the, the guy was opening slowly, slowly, and we were passing flat out <laughs> like that. So already we came in, uh, in Furano uh, fast. Just before the, the, the house of Enzo, he did it again. Mm. And the guy was like that, you know. And that is the magic of uh, <laughs> physics. And that, I don't know what happened. <laughs> when I had to stop the car, I just turned a little bit. He opened, but in the meantime, I, I had the, my foot on brake, and the car did like that. Boom. Mm. Huh? Magic. Yeah, it was... Like a, a yeah, pizza, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so we were on the roof. I was on my knee. He was uh, the head down. He looked at me. He said, "Are you okay?" I said, "Yeah," but the roof was touching uh, the steering wheel, you yeah. know. And then the mechanics arrived, cleaned everything, opened the trunk to get out. Uh, Gerard and myself. I was cut a little bit on the head. Uh, they hid me in uh, in the ambulance because the ambulance was just behind. And at this moment, uh, maybe f- two minutes after that, arrived Jean Todd, John Barnard. Uh, Montezemolo with a car to see the test. And uh, the mechanics, they cover the car. He looks like uh, uh, John Barnard said, this is a prototype. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, no, 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 it's okay. So he didn't open, you know, the the, 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 yeah, the, blanket. the, 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 the blanket. Then Gerard said, uh, to Jean Todd, did you speak with Jean? Because he had an accident. <laughs> And Jean Todd said, oh, which yeah, but the accident you had, you yeah, were driving. Yeah, we yeah. Are, yeah. yeah. He had your accident. And then he you started. Were driving. He, you had the accident. He started the Formula One and then he goes, you know. So when Jean uh, found out, it's a big scandal, but mm. not because we had a uh, small issue, because we broke his car. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, it was a, uh, and it was always, uh, been always hiding this story, never really yeah, came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you know, in Italy, they want to know everything. So because yeah. they had no picture, no thing, sure. on the auto sprint, they made a, 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 car, uh, yeah. a they, drawing, uh, well, a yeah. drawing yeah. you know, like the car yeah. and uh, Jean Todd like that. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he was not very happy, I guess. No, no, no he was very upset. <laughs> Other things, I mean, there was the story with the dog, which was in your room in the, in the motorhome. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, because when he arrived, uh, yeah. the, the queen, uh, queen from uh, Queen CC arrived, you know, from Austria. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay, let's wait. I open, <laughs> I open his uh, uh, angers to his uh, red overall. He put like that. I had a French bulldog. I put the French bulldog in the same. <laughs> and the dog was, uh, you know, with hair everywhere. <laughs> and when <laughs> I remember, Gerard arrived, I was looking from the window. He opened the uh, motor, uh, the motorhome. He came up, and the dog was. <laughs> the same. He came down, <laughs> talking like that. <laughs> yeah. And which one you remember? Well, I mean, Nereus. 
And now I remember first, because he was telling before the story with the camera, you know, hmm. uh, with Monza. I remember we had a race in Hockenheim. And, you know, in the end of the day, when we when he had his good day and I had my good day, we've been inside one dance, you know. Mm-hmm. He had been quicker than me or the other way around. So we, we end up a lot of times next to each other fighting, as he said before. And there was an, we was in Hockenheim and he was in front of me. And I couldn't go faster, you know. I mm-hmm. was on the limit every lap, under his gearbox, but no way to attack him mm-hmm. because it was just... No chance. And I said, oh, shit, and how did I get in front of him? And at one stage I say to myself, let's try. So I radioed the box to Sean, and, uh, to, to Dot, and I, and I scream and say, well, uh, can, you, can you tell to go, Sean to go on the side because I can go much quicker, much faster. I can so catch the other one. Yeah, know. I can catch the other one. So let's give it a try, you never know, you know. Then, two laps later, I saw him already <laughs> <laughs> moving on the right side, you know, <laughs> going by and, and being in front. And, and it worked very well. Nothing, everything stayed quiet, everything fine. I said, well, that's great, it works well. So we had another race in Estoril, <laughs> same season, a bit later, you know. Same story again. He in front of me, I'm under the gearbox, no way to attack him. I said, let's try it again. <laughs> so then this time I could see it the straight already, you know, mm-hmm. from the back, the helmet going like this. <laughs> saying, no, 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 not again. And, and the same story again. I, I, and I think at this moment it may click with him at one stage, you know. And after the race he came and he said, but he looked to my face, I was laughing. He said, but you didn't ask her. <laughs> so, so the whole thing exploded. <laughs> He got very upset. Oh, in Estoril also. Yes. In Estoril, we had a race. We've been in front. Uh, see? So at at four o'clock in the morning, I stand up, went to the bathroom. Ah, I say, today, because it was the time change. Summertime. We always, uh, summertime. summertime yeah. So let's give a call to Shaw. So I called him in the park room. I said, uh, Shaw, the one hour change, whatever, where you complain the next morning. I'm <laughs> no, we... we, we we had fun because we we love uh, what we did yep. and, and we had a, a a nice life. Yeah, but you you said the right thing because I'm sometimes I don't like, especially also with Ayrton, we had a lot of jokes mm. going on. I don't like to talk with these things as jokes the whole time because we had such a hard fight on the yeah. racetrack with Ayrton with you, you know, and and it was so dangerous and and it was so high competitive with Prost with. Uh, with Menzel, with Senna, or whoever, that it, to end up just talking jokes, you think this is, this, this was yeah. just jokes. Mm-hmm. No, it wasn't. But as you say, most of the things yeah. are not even a joke. It's just a consequence yeah. of, of the situation, you know. Absolutely. And it was probably like a release valve to, to put and some yeah, pressure yeah, off. Yeah, 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 maybe, yeah. yeah. Then you went to Benetton. Why you went to Benetton? Because Michael Schumacher needed the cockpit, or what, what was the reason? No, the, I mean, it was very simple. Mm. When uh, Michael uh, signed with uh, Ferrari, mm. um, I had to go. He was a uh, writer. Mm. He, he had to choose uh, his teammate. That was really uh, one driver, uh, number one, and uh, a second driver. So mm-hmm. I, didn't, I didn't have the room to, to stay. Yep. And to be honest, uh, I was very, um, it was very unfair, and that is the reason why, uh, for a moment, I had an argument with Jean Todt because it was unfair the way it happened. Mm-hmm. Because every everything was set, and then I knew it because on the mean, on the meantime, Flavio was uh, saying he had a meeting this day with Jean. He had uh, this day they signed. That is a situation. So I had all the information from. Uh, from um, Flavio, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I didn't, I didn't like the way it happened. And then uh, I, I was maybe too, too aggressive to Jean. But I, I told him my uh, unsatisfaction unsat- about mm-hmm. that. But you didn't expect that Gerhard becomes your no. Because when did you hear or who told you? And no, but uh, so when I signed, when everything was okay. Uh, Flavio called me and said, uh, okay, now uh, you have your teammate. You want to know who he is? He said, yeah, sure. <laughs> said, Gerhard said, oh, come on. <laughs> I didn't, uh, it said it was a joke. You know? <laughs> but I said, okay, no problem. But and that, why you finally left for Benetton? 
You could have stayed. With but, yeah, no, no, I had a contract. Mm. You know, I I had an option to go out. Ferrari didn't have, so they wasn't expecting that they, the, the team should be Michael and myself. Mm. And and it was very simple. I mean, I learned when I was with Ayrton that uh, always better you prepare yourself in the right way. So I what I did, I went to the team and say, well, you know, now first they they kept it very secret with Michael. Mm. So we've been somewhere racing, and I told to the press. Michael has signed for Ferrari, <laughs> but I didn't know. Mm. You know. The next day, big thing, Michael has signed for Ferrari. And then Montezemolo called me, screams on the phone that I had to put it like this. <laughs> you know? So what, what I'm talking and it's not true and whatever. So from this moment on, I know it's true. So mm. I said, okay. So I start to think what I do need to do to be prepared proper for Michael. And, and, and I felt that Michael is another guy where mm. we're gonna be not easy and uh, so very simple i went to the team and i said listen uh, all fine for me but i want us canelli as my engineer and and they said we cannot give you us canelli as canelli has to be on top of everything i said no i want him on my car and and as i was not sure if they tell me the truth if it's just overall maybe i would have thought about it but I had a little bit the feeling it could be like with Senna, mm, that he ends yeah. up with him. So I said, okay, thank mm. you, bye-bye. And then, uh, for some reason, I was together with, with Flavio. And I oh. said, okay, uh, I go with Sean. <laughs> and, and honestly, it was great, because uh, with Rory and uh, Ross and all the setup uh, Michael had in Benetton, yep. I was confident. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there but was a lot of guys also in where I know already from my yeah. earlier time, you know, as you say, Rory uh, and Ross and, and, and Juan Wildebart. Yeah, yeah, and was so it so was, a, was a, a great team. Mm -hmm. What we both underestimated how much Michael took already with him for, to Ferrari. Yeah. yeah, they left after. I, uh, I had Rory and Ross only uh, in, um, at the first race, and then they left. Mm -hmm. But what was funny, what you don't know, is also so Flavio then tried to say, why you don't come to us? Mm -hmm. And so I say, okay, I come, but I want Pat Simmons as my engineer, because I know Pat very yeah, well yeah. from my first time when he was with Theo Fabi and I mm -hmm. had another engineer. And I said, this time, Pat Simmons is the guy to have. And Flavio was correct, because Flavio said, yeah, I, I promised to Sean, mm. and I cannot change my, my word. Yeah, very good. Uh, and I pushed hard. Yeah, yeah. but Pat, uh, Pat was, uh, was great, yeah. really. I was so yeah. happy to have him. Yeah, yeah, Pat, mm. Pat is a super good guy. Yeah. But even Pat was uh, in trouble when everybody left. left. Yeah. And it was probably not the best car in these two years again. It was a good car in some circuits. No, yeah. it, it, yeah. As a, uh, in these days, mm. I mean, in our days, sorry, uh, the baseline was uh, good. Mm -hmm. We had a good baseline, but you need to have a development uh, sure, yeah. uh, behind. Mm. Because straight away, we had this uh, trouble with uh, the, the springs on the back, who cost me, by the way, the Grand Prix. Are you in, in uh, Austria? Uh, no, in um, Argentina, you broke the suspension on the back? I don't remember anymore. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. And, and me in, um, in Monaco. Yeah, Monaco was the race you could Yeah, remember. so... But we had zero development from the, the, the people yep. we had. But the, the baseline was not bad, huh? Yeah, no, it, it was not bad. I always, I, I thought uh, quite a lot of time about it, what's happened in the last two years, because in the end of the day, we never been really happy there. You not, me not, we... It was well, always they left. Yeah, but they, they left and, you know, this team was a world championship team with Michael. Everybody saw in front still, this world champion team, and of course, everybody thought Michael is gone. The two, the two are here, so this, mm. they are the reason why yeah, we yeah. don't win anymore the world championship. And and there was, but there was much more reasons for it. Okay. And but I won't be fair. Also on my side, I cannot talk about you, but on my side, it was the end of my career. Mm. And I remember well when I was young, I didn't care if a battle was like this or like this. If I had a mirror or no mirror, I all, all what I cared is to do flat this corner. Mm. When I was then later on, you know, you, you, you come, ah, this is, could be better, this could be, and, and I was a bit in this stage already. And, and so it was not anymore also the best I could have give. 
But at the same time, I have to say, as, as Jean says, the people went to Ferrari, they mm. went away, and it wasn't the same team, I think, as we have seen with Michael. I try. It was a bit different for me because I really push hard and I try because I feel also um, uh, embarrassed because, as you say, the public from outside, it looks like we were in a, the, the winning team and mm. we are not winning. So it was very tough, and uh, uh, I was I was trying, but uh, no way. Mm -hmm. You stopped then your, the, your career. Was it a hard decision, Gerhard? And opposite to Jean, who after his Formula One career did DTM, did Le Mans, even the Indy 500, you stopped completely at driving. Why was that? You know, I felt. Formula One is something, it's so special. Mm -hmm. And and I've been lucky and able to, to get end up in Formula One in the best teams with winning races. And I just didn't want to step down into other categories. And uh, and for me, the driving was not that important anymore to say, well, I cannot do different, I need to be in a car. And I have to say, I love also to watch these drivers, what are going then, like you did with then with other races, like in Austria, Dieter Quest, and now he's 80, and he's still uh, every weekend trying to see where he can run. Mm. Uh, I say, well, that was a period of my life, and now another period starts. Let's do some other mm. other things, what you can enjoy, and where you can maybe prove yourself. And John, you needed this part after your Formula One career. Why did you do uh, DTM then? And, and well, first of all, mm. uh, um, I didn't want to stop. Mm -hmm. I stopped because of the situation. <coughs> At Jordan then? Yeah. yeah. Mm. I, I finished fourth on my first race on mm -hmm. my life. And then uh, I had to maybe to stay in Minardi, uh, teams who had no, uh, uh, possi no possibility yeah. to compete anybody. So uh, that was not my, uh, my will. Mm -hmm. But I decided to stop in uh, when I was 37. And... Uh, Norbert Haug asked me to have a, a test with the DTM and straight away he said, no, 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 no. Uh, that was, it, 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 everything was in Suzuka. But then when I came back, he, he, he phoned me back again and said, the car is ready. You are testing this uh, in two weeks time. I said, uh, okay, I go. And best time again of my racing uh, days, DTM. Mm -hmm. Because Norbert was fantastic, Mercedes, great. Mm. Um, I was with all the young generations, mm. so they look at me like a, a, a dinosaur. <laughs> and uh, the way I was talking to Norbert, because Norbert was very strict with uh, with the young kids, uh, very good atmosphere, mm. very good atmosphere. Why did you did you do in the end some crazy thing like the Indy 500? I, uh, if tomorrow I have the opportunity, I do it again. Mm. I, I like to race. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, when you asked me before what I, what I think his, his, his specialty was, mm. and I said this quick lap or this mm. uh, uh, wet conditions, or and another thing he was breaking, he mm. was always breaking extremely late, uh, very spectacular, very good. But when I read, Sure, Lizzie goes to India. I called him. I said, Sean, explain me. <laughs> You're going to Indy. You, you best, uh, you, your best thing is breaking late and being quick in the wet. <laughs> Both wet, they don't race, and breaking, there is no breaking. Explain me what you're doing in India. <laughs> it was a fantastic experience, yeah. except, of course, the competitivity yeah. of the engine was not there, but mm. uh, the respect, in me, again, you know, the respect because I'm very sensitive about that, mm -hmm. in between the drivers, because all of us, they know um, how important it is to have the respect, because you play all the time in between 350 and 40, yeah. 400 kilometers. I mean, it's crazy. The speed on, the, on, the, on this track is, is unbelievable. Because on TV, okay, it looks wild, it looks uh, long, but you have no chance to look the mirrors and that is the reason why there is a spotter, because mm. if you look the mirrors, you're in a wall already. <laughs> it's so fast. Yeah. And the corners, I mean, mm. it's four corners. It's yeah. not... Uh, yeah, yeah. An, I mean, it, it was magic. I, I love it. I love mm. it. But 
there is a time for everything. I did it. It was my middle age crisis. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good final word, Jean. Jean and Gerhard, thank you very much. I think it were great stories and it was really interesting to listen to it. Thank you. Thank you. Liebe Motorsportfreunde, das war's für heute. Ich hoffe, Ihnen hat äh, die Sendung genauso gefallen wie mir und bis zum nächsten Mal. Servus. Oh.